Hey everyone, you Mark is here, your friend in sales. Today I want to share with you an advice that I got from a billionaire that actually in the beginning it threw me off a bit, but as I started looking into things with using that approach, it helped me so much. So I want to share this with you like straight away. So here's how this works. Where you are right now, you are making decisions in order to be in a better place in the future. So you're looking at things you don't like where you are, right? So you are looking to change your situation. And the way that you go about and do that first is first try to understand where you are, come to a certain reasoning, right? And then you assess based on your, on your experiences and probably from information from people that actually know what they are talking about, right? So you essentially you ignore people that don't know what they're talking about, but you pay attention to pe people that are probably at the same place that you're looking towards to be in the in near future. And when you go about and doing your decisions, I find that because you are looking a little bit like for perfection, right? Essentially, you're looking for a much better place than you are right now. It's your uh, perceived perception. You tend to ostracize yourself too much because you are looking at things from either I get it or I don't, right? And this presents a problem because essentially when you are looking into things, it's a little bit like it's either always or never, and what I've learned with a billionaire that I talked to, actually two people, they pretty much told me the same thing in a different way, is that um, you, don't, you never use always and never use never. And what I mean by this is that you assess what you are about to do and attribute it uh, an independent uh, statistic value. You say something like, there's a high chance of this being successful. But you don't say, uh, if I don't get it, uh, like ostracize yourself, don't do that. But on the other hand, don't think you're a genius just because you pulled it off. It's just, you understand that there's a good chance of you achieving that. And you do that by doing some independent thinking. This is how I'm, what I mean by this. You look at things and say, am I confident in my assessment because I've been successful in the past of doing things in every time that I, I came across situations like this, every time that I made a decision, I usually were successful. Or are you just saying that based on like on the top of the top of your head? Because if you are just confident on saying something that you have absolutely no track record, I have absolutely no idea if it's going to work or not, and pretty much throwing everything but the kitchen sink and hoping for the best, you're in for some heartaches. So what you do is assess from an independent point of view and look at things and say, there's a good chance of me being successful at this because, I'll give you an example, I'm not putting money at risk here just based on me doing telephone calls, right? And I have still money for overhead for let's say for six months, right? So the, the question that you're asking is, can I for the next six months do enough phone calls so that I can get one qualified person, at least one that can pretty much cover all the, the past six months. Now, you're going to be very analytical into this and say, even if I was the best one, could I achieve this? Or even if I was the worst one, could I achieve this? And so this test that you are um, doing every time that you are about to make a decision, don't ostracize yourself too much if you fail because you can't be all right, right? And on the other hand, you can't be all wrong. So there's a good chance of you pretty much doing a, a great assessment, right? Because you're, you're an intelligent person, right? So this is what I mean by this is that when you do your decisions, first be analytical, don't be emotional and just look at things where you are right now given your people's resources, given your intellect resources meaning do you have like the knowledge immediately right now and the experience on how to achieve this right? because probably you don't right because you're trying to get to the, this next level right so you need to get this knowledge from someone else and like take you by the hand and a good example of this is my mentor in my life insurance uh, career the path that i chosen he has different in, he has different insights and it's not like I'm not reading. It's not like I'm not studying every day very hard and like trying to do the best of my ability to move forward. But you'll miss things. And you'll miss them because you don't have a track record yet. 
And when you are dealing today, no, I mean tomorrow, not in the next uh, 10 years. I mean, like today, you make a uh, pick up the phone and call the person that has the experience. It is today. He is today where you want to be in the next in the next years. He will find things that you are, and he will tell you things that you are not expecting because you don't know about them yet, right? But on the other hand, and this is what I mean by this, so that you can uh, don't uh, stay negative, is that you are not wrong. You just don't have the enough experience yet. And, and this, I know this is kind of a little bit of comfort to, today, but it, it tells me that on a consistent basis. Sometimes I'm, it's very analytical, and when we are talking, it essentially tells me you're not wrong. Right? So essentially it means like you have to keep pushing, right? And sometimes I think because you are expecting things like this uh, and so fast, you, you don't, uh, you, you immediately go from, I thought I was right, then I'm not like, I'm completely 100% off. And this is the, the thing that the, that billionaire that told me that um, to pay attention to, because uh, he, he told me essentially, I never say always, I never say never. So this comes in relationship with what my mentor is telling me essentially is that you are making an assessment based on your experience and your knowledge. You're not an idiot, right? But you're not also assuming you're a genius. So it must be something in between, right? It's not to offend. It's not to overemphasize capabilities. Not at all. I'm sure all of us are trying to do our best. The thing is, when you are actually being analytical, not uh, fudging the numbers. So you're looking at things and say, I've done this before. I don't have experience of uh, this amount of volume, but I've done sales before. I've done, let's say, sales door to door. So I'm just changing my model, but there's some things I actually know how to do, right? So I can't be all wrong. This is what I mean by this. So be analytical, but on the other hand, don't be way too self-criticizing because that doesn't help. Because probably you are just being emotional about the process because you are failing right now. But if you saw this from a perspective of someone that is like 20 or 30 or 40 or even 50 or more years ahead, looking back at himself or her, essentially looking at you, right? And saying, he's not wrong. This is why they are telling you this. So remember, you are not wrong and you are not completely right. It's something in between. And analytically, you need to choose if that line is above 50%. So you make an assessment regarding if it's something that a path that you can keep progressing on until you make your next step and become successful. I hope this was useful. Remember, it's all about the journey. But when you are about the journey, it's about understanding exactly what you are doing and if what you are doing is correct or not. So be analytical, don't be emotional, don't criticize yourself too much because this is about you making it and you're not wrong, you're right.